Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Microsoft Excel portion of our CGS 1060 class. Um, so Excel is perhaps the most important um, software application in the Microsoft Office suite of applications. Um, I say that because of two reasons. One, of course, almost every business in the US and a big, big majority of businesses in the world use Microsoft Excel for some of their business needs, okay? So what is Excel? Well, so Excel is called a spreadsheet application, a spreadsheet software. Um, it's used to allow companies to count sales. It's used for companies to track inventory. It's used to, uh, for companies to create charts on some of their sales data, their inventory data, their um, uh, employee work hours, their employee sales, their employee um, uh, human resources um, costs, everything that has anything to do with numbers. A lot of that is done with Excel. Okay. So uh, for this particular module of our class, I'm going to uh, have three recordings. This one is just to give a little overview where I will demonstrate, just physically demonstrate. I won't be on the MindTap site for it. Um, I, I'm just going to demonstrate Excel. Okay. Then I'll do a second video, and that one will um, demonstrate some of the training activities in all four uh, modules for Excel. Just like Word, there's four modules for, uh, for Excel, and I will demonstrate uh, four or five tasks out of each of the four modules. So I'll do somewhere between 16 and 20, maybe as many as 24 tasks that I demonstrate how to do for you at MindTap. And of course, remember that the MindTap site um, allows you to click an observe button or a practice button to also help you with your trainings, all right? Um, and then I'll do a third Excel video, that one to demonstrate part of uh, Excel module one project. And as you recall from Word, uh, the module projects, you have to download a start file, download an instructions file, and sometimes download another file that you'll then um, input into the Excel document, Excel spreadsheet, okay? So I'm gonna do all three of those, but for today, it's just an overview of Excel. So let's go ahead and start making some Excel calculations. So I'm going to now uh, get out of there, showing me and share my screen. All right. So let me get out of that part. Now, it doesn't matter which of my classes I'm in right now. Okay, just understand that for all CGS 1060 classes, this is an Excel overview for you. All righty. All right. So I'm going to just click on my start menu and type Excel. And I want to basically open a new file, a new Excel spreadsheet. All right, so a blank workbook is what I want, okay? So this is a blank workbook. Excel, anytime you click anywhere in Excel, you're clicking into a cell, okay? Every one of these are cells. Just look right here. This is the A column. Columns go up and down. This is the E column. This is the G column. This is the Z column. And then after A through Z, which you know is 26, then there's AA. And if I keep going over, it'll go to AZ. So that's now 52 different columns. And then it goes to BA, to BZ. So this goes on and then C and D, et cetera. I'll just go over here for a little while. So right now, I'm in column F4. That means A through Z, A, B, A through Z, et cetera, to the Bs, BA to the C's, CA all the way to CZ, the D's, DA all the way to DZ, and now the E's, and then after the E's get to EZ, then FA to FZ. So there are just tons, okay, tons of columns. And then watch this as I page down. So now I'm on row 36. Rows go left to right. So that's the 36th row. Here's the 49th row. 
Here's the 67th row. Okay, and watch, page down. This time I'll page down about, I don't know, just go there. I'm now in row 3427. Everyone has a cell address. This is cell address F3418. So there are literally, literally tens of thousands, really there's hundreds of thousands and possibly millions of cells in every Excel workbook. So it's a ton, okay? So let me now hit back home. Won't even let me go back home. It's just too much. Let's see if I can do it with the control key. Yeah, control probably there. All right. So anyway, so the Excel spreadsheets are used primarily to you uh, to do calculations, to use formulas to do calculations, and to create charts um, based on calculations. Okay. So. We now know every one of these is a cell, but you can also be in, like this is, I'm in six cells right there. I'm in C3, D3, C4, D4, C5, and D5. Every cell address, okay, is based on the column letter. In this case, that's the C part over here where you see the name box, C, and the row. So column, and where it matches the row for that particular cell, is the cell address. So C3, okay, is that one. Next one, right, if I'm over, let's say in the H, H6 is that cell address. I'm in column H and row six. So that was here, okay. Let's go over here. I'm in cell uh, column X and I'll just make it, let's say row 20. So X and where it hits 20, right there, cell address X20. And again, this goes on and on and on, all right? Okay, so come back up here to the top. Now, I'm gonna be doing some calculations, but I want you guys to be able to see these pretty well. So I wanna do the select all and make every one of these cells a larger font, okay? So the select all is to the left of the letter A and above the number one. And once I click right there, right where you see the hollow cursor, hollow plus sign, if you will. So to the left of A and above number one, if you click right there, everything is selected on the sheet and here by the way is the worksheet okay it's called sheet one but you also see down here next to it there's a plus sign i can add another sheet and i can add another sheet and another sheet and all of these sheets can have hundreds of thousands of cells and this is one excel workbook one so obviously there's a ton of things that you can do in excel okay so I, what i said i was going to do here is do the select all and make the font larger. So I shall make this font 20. And now you probably noticed that the cells are now bigger. Okay, that's because I'm using a larger font. Okay, so now first thing I'm going to do is show you a few things on the ribbon. I'm not going to show you them all, that's for sure, but I'll show you a few things on the ribbon. This is just again an, an Excel overview to help you get a little understanding before you do the trainings. Okay, remember four trainings and three projects that you'll be having to do for Excel. And by the way, depending on which class you're in, Excel training started somewhere between the 17th, maybe the 15th or 16th of February, uh, at, or perhaps as late as the February 21st or 22nd, something like that. And they all go to about, um, you know, middle of March maybe the 15th, maybe the 18th, 19th, you know, something like that. But regardless, you're getting nearly four weeks of Excel training in this class, but you have to work hard because Excel is way harder than Word and Word was way harder than Windows 10. Okay. All right. So I'm going to show you some things first of all on the clipboard side, all right? So the clipboard, the usual cut, the usual, if you're going to be using it, you know, from the ribbon anyway, the usual copy. Uh, this thing here is called a paint, uh, format painter. Format painter, if I had certain text in a, with a certain look, um, maybe I had a bold feature on it, maybe the italics feature, maybe a red font feature. Well, if I click the paintbrush, okay, which is the format painter, and then I click it on top of another cell, whatever the formatting on this first cell was applies to the next one. Let me just show you this by typing a few things, all right? So I'll say over here, Prof Maloney, and I'll put here, I'll go over here, 
CGS 1060C. Okay, so I'll make prof over here in red. All right, I'll make Maloney in italics. Whoops, Maloney in italics and underscore. And I'll make CGS 1060C in bold. So I did something different in each one. All right, now I'm going to type three more words in three different cells. So over here, um, I shall say, let's say spring, oops, sorry. What the heck did I do? Let's see. Okay, so I'll say here spring, and here I'll say 2022, and here I'll say mm, homestead. Okay, all right, now. I want to apply the redness from prof to spring, the italics and the underscore from Maloney. So prof in red makes spring in red. Maloney with italics and underscore to this for 2022. And the bold from CGS 1060C to Homestead. Okay, so if I click on the prof cell, and I go back to home, which is where I have been. Okay. I click on the format painter just right here. Now watch when I click it right here. You see underneath or to the right of the um, white hollow plus sign, which is the, the cursor, you see a paintbrush. Okay. And when I click right here, that prof in red, this will still be spring, but it'll be in red. See? Okay. Now this one here, again, the italics and the underscore, I click the format painter and I apply it to this one. And now that one is in italics and an underscore. When you see pound signs, it means that the contents of the cell cannot fit in the new cell. So if I just widen it, you go between the two, the, the column you're in, okay, which is I right here, okay? So this one here is in column I. So I go between column I and column J and drag, click it and drag to the right a little bit. And then it'll make it bigger so that the contents can fit. And you can make the contents as wide as you want. Okay. You can also just double click and it'll fix it. Like there, you only see two things. If I double click right here between I and J, boom, boom, and there it is. Now it's wide enough to accommodate that text. Okay. So, prof, I use the format painter to apply it here. Maloney with italics and underscore, I use the format painter to apply it here. And now I'm going to apply bold from cell E2 to this one. So again, format painter and click. All right. So that's how that stuff works. Okay. Now, um, also in, so well, that's primarily the clipboard. Okay. That's it. So, you know, it's cut, copy, paste, but also the format painter. All right. The font group is exactly the same as in Word, but now you have a borders property because cells can be like this you can have a border around it you can also have a border around just one cell if you want um, you can have two maybe three this way and you can put a border around it if you want how would you do it you can click this down for the border let's say i want an all borders okay so all borders click this one and now click away but you see that one has borders now okay all right undo that all right, now undo that, redo that. Okay, so that is the you know, border. So everything else is pretty well the same, okay? Now over here in the alignment group, now this is different. Here is a top align within a cell, okay, within a cell. In other words, just to make the text at toward the top. Like I'll just type one letter in here. Um, it may be hard to see because it's on font size 20. So for a minute, I'm gonna change everything back. So let me do a select all and make this go down to 10 just for now. Okay. So now it's tiny, right? Oh, actually, no, that won't work. Yeah, that it'll work on, wait, let's see. Let me think here. So the font is 10, but that, no, that didn't work. Let me undo that, figure out this. Let's see if I type, I'm not, let's come over here and I'll type, but I, for this one cell, I just want to make this a nine. Okay. So now the font is small, it's a nine. And I want, so right now it's on the bottom, the bottom right here on the alignment, bottom align. So I'll just type the number 99. Okay, you see how it's on in the bottom? Okay, 
So that's the bottom. Now I'll click the center. Okay, so that's the center align. And then the top for the top align. Okay, so that's all that does. And then of course under it, it's just like in Word again, that's left, that's center, and that's right in terms of justification. Okay, all right, so out of that one. Okay, now um, there's also in, um, in Excel, a real cool feature called wrap, uh, sorry, right here is for the orientation. This particular arrow here with the A, B on the top of it, on the top left, I guess you'd say of it, is at a 45 degree angle. If you're, if you're decent with math in terms of numbers, you know, that if it was like going from left to right, exactly the way my cursor is currently going, that would be a 90 degree. And then 180 degree would be up and down this way. And then over here would make it go to 270 and straight up and down would be zero or 360, depending on where you were. Okay. So if I want to type something and then have it change to something like that, let's say I was just saying month, like we're going to be doing a lot of things in Excel, by the way, where we're using months because you know, we want to know monthly sales, monthly costs, monthly, you know, inventory, whatever. Okay. So month. Now, if I want, because this would be a caption right? Which really means I probably should do it up here, actually. Let's just delete that. So let's pretend that right here, actually, I'll even put month over here in A1, all right? So I'll say month. And I'm just going to widen that just so that cell A1 fits that, even though it doesn't really matter. But anyway, month. Now, I want to now make it where it's going at a 45 degree angle. I can click this, just click the button, or I can click the down arrow, and then it'll tell me there's a lot of choices. As I hover on it, um, and sometimes it shows, sometimes it doesn't. But I want it to be exactly that one anyway, so watch what happens. Okay, see? It just is now at a cool 45 degree angle. If I want to now uh, do the down arrow and make it the opposite way, where the M is on the top left and the H is on the bottom right, do it this one. Okay? I can also make it where I'm rotating whatever. You know, I, I would never use these, but you know, you can. Some people do, obviously. So that's what they are. Okay? So just that kind of stuff, uh, make it go rotating down, but from that side, okay? So again, all cool stuff, but it's it's used basically to highlight caption, uh, highlight like, um, yeah, captions, what would be a caption in, in the, uh, you know, for any given set of numbers, if you will, okay? All right, and then over here, there's a wrap text. So if I have something where I'm saying, uh, let's see, uh, monthly, sales by, I'll just say monthly sales, okay? So monthly sales, you can see here's A1, but you can see that monthly sales doesn't fit in it. So part of it looks like it's in B1 and part of it looks like it's in C1. Well, technically the way you tell what's in what cell is by looking up here at what we call the formula bar, okay? So there's nothing in C1 because there's nothing in the formula bar. Well, there's also nothing in B1 because there's nothing in the formula bar. So really the whole two words are in cell A1. So I click monthly sales in A1 and now you see it all pops up right there, okay? That means that the contents of monthly sales are officially in A1 even though they extend to B and C1. Now, if I want to not let anything I type into B or C1, let's say as an example, I don't type in B, but I type in C. And I'll just type in here uh, inventory, okay? What's going to happen now is that the monthly sales, you see it here in A1, it's still there, okay? There's still nothing in B1, but now C1 has the word inventory. So we have a conflict because monthly sales extended over into cell C1 the way we had done it. And C1 now has the word inventory, so the LES part of monthly sales can't fit here, okay? So the way we would fix this, if we want it to, we can delete that just to get rid of it. So now monthly sales are there, but so that you can't do that, you can click and select all the cells that the text extends into. Well, let me actually show you one other way. So another way would be to just make A wider. So again, you click between A and B, hold your shift, your left mouse button down and drag it to the right. And now see A1, 
has that, but now B1 is not inter interfered with, nor is C1. So C1, I think, is where I type inventory. Now it'll show up fine, okay? And monthly sales shows up fine. And if I wanted to type question mark or something in B1, that would also show up fine, okay? So you could do it this way. But see, when you do it this way, look at all these things here below. They all have that same wide, um, you know, cell content now, like A3 is that wide, where B3 is only this wide, okay? So that, in effect, takes, wastes a lot of space down below, okay? So well, another way we could do this is let me delete this and delete this and make this smaller again, more or less the way it was at the beginning. Let's see. No, it's not like that because LES went over to the other one. Not, not quite that wide either. Maybe just here more. All right, it was more or less like that, where monthly sales would be there, but if you click in C and type something, it would only, I think it did go to S. No, it got the whole SA, though, if I recall. So it was exactly that size, okay? Anyway, so I delete that, but now I want to do it the, the preferred way would be this. So this is wrap text, okay? I haven't shown you that one yet, but I'll just demonstrate it, and then I'll do it with the Merge and Center. So wrap text, what it does is it wraps any text that's in a single cell that just won't fit. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's make this, I think this is a little wider again. You know what? I can figure it out by just clicking here. So that's 69 pixels. This is more. That's 64. So they're probably all 64. Yeah. So I want to make this one 64. Okay, it's 67. So if I just make it a little bit, that's 63. I'm not, you know, I'm good enough to be able to get it exactly then on that 64. Unless I just happen to bump into it. No. Ah. Anyway, I'll just leave it. Okay, so I can't quite get it, but it doesn't matter, right? So, but I'm going to now in A1 use wrap text. And what wrap text will do is anything that can't fit into the confines of this cell width, okay, will wrap below it. So now, watch, I'm in A1 and I click, uh, click wrap text. So now that also prevents all these others from being wider, right? And it fits up here. But normally, if you do that, then you want to make these width the make the width wide enough so that maybe it's in two different cells as opposed to I mean three different well rows, if you will, within the one column. Like as an example, if I drag it like that, now the H is up top. I want a little bit more. Now the L is up there, but not the Y. A little bit more. Now monthly sales is up there, and then if I wanted, I could center it. Okay. So anyway, you can do it with wrap text. Okay. But now again, let's undo it, undo, undo, undo. So wrap text though would work. And you could also do it with merge and center. With merge and center, you click in the cell that the, the words are actually in. So A1 has monthly sales, remember up here in the formula bar. But then you click and hold the left mouse down and just drag to the right so that you're selecting all three of those cells, okay? And then you click merge and center. And you can click it with the down arrow, and you got it this way, or you got it this way, or you got it this way, or you got it this way. I want merge and center from left to right. You see the arrows? So now monthly sales is still in cell A1. Okay, like if I click up here, it's A1. But you see, if you notice the green border, the green border is actually A1, B1, and C1. Okay, but down here below it, it's A2, B2, and C2. I can't click B1. OK, I can't click C1. Technically, I could. I could double click and it'll then open it for me. But so the point of merge and center is if you want to type a caption or type a few words that will you know, need to have three or four or five or six or God knows how many uh, cells selected or you know, used in it, and then just click all that text. Let's say it goes way over that far. Then you can do merge and center again. OK. And now it's from A1 all the way to J1, but below I can type. Anywhere down here I can type. Okay. But up here, da -da, it's all based on merge and center. All right. So let's undo that. All right. Let's just delete that now. Okay. So that's that.
Okay, so that's your alignment, uh, including wrap text and merge and center. Now the next one may be the most important thing in Excel for, for our class, just because there's so many good things that you can use that are all in this group. So it's called the number group, plus you can do the um, uh, number, number launcher to show more things for, for this particular stuff, okay? I won't go into all these, but you'll be doing it as you do more in the class, because I'm already 16 minutes in, I believe, of this particular um, video, and I don't want it to go too, too long. I want no more than 35 or 40 minutes, okay? All right, so uh, I've done basically the font, I've, you know, which means basically for this class, it's just the borders, because everything else is pretty well the same. OK, the alignment, I demonstrated how the top align, the middle align and the bottom align are OK, demonstrated what you can do with the orientation in terms of clicking the down arrow and showing that it can be up. It can be down at the same angle. It can be vertical, meaning up and down straight. It can be straight from the bottom up and rotate the text down format. You know, all those things we can do. All right. Um, but the number group is also important. So let me now over here. I'll take. I'll type again a number. I'll start more in the middle of the screen, though. I'll just be an H, all right? So I'm going to type the number 999.99. Okay. Now watch what happens when I enter it. So it's typed it as 1,000, right? But that's rounding. Rounding in Excel, meaning if I do a calculation with this number, it's not a thousand. It's what you see again in the formula bar. It's 999.99, but it rounded it to a thousand and took away the two decimal places just to make it fit. Okay. So it made it fit right here. I can also put a dollar sign on before the thousand, even though it's already typed in. Watch, I can click a dollar right here, the dollar sign. That's called accounting number format. Once I click it, now it's showing up as 999.99 again, but with a dollar sign. I can also type it instead with a, well, let's go to the comma style first, comma style. Comma style is the same as the accounting style, except no dollar sign, okay? And actually, let me make the number bigger now. Let's make it 1,999, because there's something else it'll do. Now you see, I'm still on the comma uh, style, but it added in addition to the decimal place and then two decimal places, it also put a comma after you know, before the, the hundreds, because this would be the thousands, the hundreds, and then in this case, the, the nothings, like the leftovers. So 1,999.99, even though I typed it as 1,999.99, okay? So here again, it's doing the rounding. Remember, I can just move it this way to make it bigger to show, but here, see, it's got a comma. Now, if I go over here again and click the dollar sign, it'll be the same again, but now with a dollar, but still with the comma, okay? So dollar sign, uh, accounting number format, and comma number format uh, are the same with the exception of the comma doesn't have the dollar sign, okay? All right. Now, you can also put in numbers as percents. But you see, I just clicked the percent. And this number here, which used to say 1999.99, but it had a dollar sign and a comma and a decimal place and then 99. But if you do a percent on a number, it basically adds to, like it gets rid of the period and the two decimal places and turns it all into a huge number. So it's never good to do a percentage that way. Let me show you how instead we would do a percent. So like tax, um, um, I'm in Pembroke Pines and the tax rate up here, I believe is 0 0.07125. Now I may be off, but either way, I'm just gonna pretend, all right? But see, that's a percent, okay? But I, I drew it out the way it, it would for us to actually apply the percent. Like if you take $100, well, let's take this number here, which rounds to 2,000, right? So it's a penny less. So if I just say 2,000 times 7%, okay, well, 2,000 times 10% is 200. So 7, you know, 0 0.07125%, which is really 7.125%, would come out to being a little bit less than what this would be. So this is 200, and it's 7 tenths off that. So it's about 142.50, in other words, okay? So if I make this thing here, though, a percent, what I would do first is enter it that way, okay? And now when I do it again, it rounded it to 7%. But in the formula bar, so if I do any calculations on that number, 
it is not multiplying by 7%, it's multiplying by 7.125%, okay? And you can also make it demonstrate that by going here and using your uh, decrease for the indent or increase for the indent, one or the other, depending on which way you're on. Right now, since there's no indentation, I'd have to increase. So if I click this arrow to the right, oh, that's the alignment group, sorry. All right, let's, that, by default, numbers always go to the right, okay? Yeah. Anyway, I'll just do it over here, though. So this one here will increase the decimals. So you're seeing it as seven and then a percent sign. Watch when I click it here once. Now it's 7.1, but that's still not the answer because the real answer is 7.125%. So if I add another one by clicking it one more time, now it's 7.13, which rounds 125. But we, again, we don't want to see the round. So if I click another one, now it's got the whole 7.125%, which is what the number really is, okay? All right. And again, you can take away decimal places by clicking on this one. So decrease. So if I click it once, now it's going to round. It was 7.125, what you see over here. Okay. But now it's, when I get away from it, 7.13% because I took one away. So if I want to take another away, I got to be in the right cell. If I take another away, now it's 7.1, it rounded it down, right? And then I take another away. And it'll then go all the way back down to 7%. But if you do a calculation, this is the number being calculated. All right? Okay. All right. So that's that one. Now, over here is conditional formatting. Uh, formatting is table. I'm not going to go into any of these. You'll be doing some things in training, but it'll be, you know, make this video way too long. So I'm going to delete that and delete this. Okay. Now, the next one I do want to show you, though, that's important and that you're going to be using a lot is auto sum. Okay, before I begin to talk about this one, though, I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to show you what the fill handle is in Excel. So no matter what cell you're in, or it could be group of cells that you're in, on the bottom right corner, meaning just right above where you see this hollow white plus sign, you see a square, a perfectly square green corner. Okay, that perfectly square green corner is called the fill handle. See, there's no fill, there's no green, big, big green square here, nor over here, nor over here, nor over on top, nor on the side until you get to the very bottom. And if I hover on top of it with this cursor, you'll see it'll turn to a thin black plus sign. Yeah, see? So that thin black plus sign that you're looking at is called the fill handle. The fill handle is extremely powerful in Excel. So let me again put up here the word month. And then a colon, like I'm entering months. Um, I'll pretend it's January. Okay, so January. Now, I typed January. As long as I typed it correctly, if I hover on the fill handle, you notice again, there's a fill handle, bottom right square, bottom right corner, and it's a little green square. If I hover on it and then click it and then drag it down one, and I'm not letting go yet, you notice you see the word February to the right of it. If I drag it down another one, you see March next to it. I can do what I did earlier in the class. So I'm in 200 and I'm on row 285, but here row 272, here row 267, et cetera. Well, if I just started any given January, see this January, you see it, it'll go to December. But if I go down to the next, it's not going up, up, up. What it's doing is it's putting the 12 months of the year, however many times they can fit in 285 rows. Basically, there's 12 months in the year, so you can do 10 at 120, you can do 20, that's 240, and then at least, you know, a few more. So we're doing a whole bunch of those. Watch as I scroll up, see? Here again, January through December, okay? Under it is another January, right? Step go up to another January, January through December, and see, then it starts another. So all it's doing, but the point is this, the fill handle is so smart, okay? And it's, it's very important in Excel. It's not, there's no such thing in Word. The reason it's important in Excel is because certain words like days of the week and months are used in almost every spreadsheet. So because they know we're going to be using things over and over again, if you type one and do the fill handle down, 
it'll go to the next one and the next one and the next one until you release that left mouse button. It'll also though go from left to right. Like I can also take this January here, hold the fill handle and go to the right. And this time I'll just stop in I. And you see it says September. So let's see. So January is column A, February is column B, March is column C, April is D, E is for May, column F is for June, column G is for July, H is for August, and I is for September. If I click again, but now just on September, and again, get the thin black plus sign, go over just one time, now it's October, okay? If I take, if I wanna get, put the one month less than October, I take the fill handle, and if I go up, it'll now be September up there, okay? If I had done this down here and taken the fill handle up, it would go back one for here, go back another for here, go back another for here, go back another for here, and another, et cetera. You can also go back from right to left. So let's take the September one here, because there's nothing to the left of it, take that fill handle and go backwards. So in I, it'll be August, okay? In H, it'll be July, and then June, and then May, and April, and whatever. So if I let those go. So the fill handle works to the right, to the left, and up and down, okay? All right, undo all that. All right, now let's do the same with the day of the week. Uh, I'm making this recording on Monday. Monday is President's Day, so I'm on Monday. I can again take the fill handle. I can go to the right, let's say to here this time. So it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Then it starts again, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. If I keep going, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, okay, then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday again. Anytime it comes to a Monday, it'll start, you know, to that, like the new Monday. So Monday through Sunday, and then Monday through Sunday, Monday through Sunday, et cetera. Okay, undo that. And now go down. And if I want to do it exactly for seven, so Monday, there's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So you see how good Excel is. As long as you can type one word, then take the fill handle, it'll fix every other word. Now, and it doesn't have to start with Monday, by the way. Like I can um, pretend that today is Thursday. So put Thursday. Now take the fill handle and it'll go Friday. So that's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. If I let go right here. But if I keep going, we'll do a few more. Okay. So Thursday, oops, Thursday through Wednesday, and then another Thursday through Wednesday, and then another Thursday, but only to Friday because I ran, I didn't do it, you know, going down that far. Okay. So very, very powerful tool is in Excel. Okay. So those are great. Now, in numbers, which are also widely used in Excel, they're much more widely used than days, meaning again, days of the week and, and months. Um, so if you have the number three, and then let's say you put the number six below it. So in Excel, in this case, you have a trend, like the first number is three, the second number is six. So if in this case, I take the fill handle just and apply it just to A1, where the number three is, if I take the fill handle and go down, it's all going to be three. It's all three because there's no trend, but it does allow me to take that same number and carry it down. It could also go over if I want to, okay? Now, if I take two though, so three is the first one and now six is the next one. So if I take both cells, okay, now what's it going to do? Well, <clears throat> Excel then takes what it figures we want to do, which is the difference. It says, well, you got three, and Excel is very smart. So it says the difference between three and six is three. So you went three to six. You probably want another three for the next one, which would be nine, another three to make it 12, another three to make it 15, another three to make it 18. Watch. But you have to select both. So I select both, take the fill handle, go down just to there. And now I have, <clears throat> I had three and six, but it took the difference three and applied it to six to make nine. It then takes the difference three and applies it to the last number nine to make 12. Then it takes the, the last number 12, applies the difference three to get 15, and then it does it to 18. And if I wanted to do that forever, and I don't need to use those, now I can just use these. I actually use even 15 and 18, so you see that way. So it'll continue doing it. And if I go down again a whole bunch of ways, I'll just stop there this time though. 
So it's always taking the difference off three, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30, okay? All right, undo that. Now, let's say now, get rid of that. Now, I want to add up those numbers, okay? But I also want to do it differently in others. So I'm going to copy. Control copy still works. I'll put these over here, Control V, and I'll also put them here, Control V again, and I'll put them here, Control V again, okay? So I want to add these numbers up, okay? And then I want to, let's see, then I'll want to multiply these times these. No, first I'll say add. You know what? Let me make them next to each other. Control X, Control V, okay? All right, so here I'm going to want to get a sum of 3 plus 3, 6 plus 6, 9 plus 9. And here I'm going to want to get a sum of all those numbers added up. And this one I won't do because it's the same numbers, okay? So let's just start with the, the first one. I want to get all those numbers there added up and put the total here. So I go to cell A7 and I go to this auto sum up here in the top right area on the ribbon. It's very, very powerful. So if I click the down arrow for auto sum and I click sum, what sum means is adding everything up. So I just click it once and it doesn't give me the answer. It tells me more or less this is what it's saying to me. I think, I think, I don't know, but I think you want to add those numbers up and it even tells me the numbers from A1 through A6. In other words, A1 plus A2 plus A3 plus A4 plus A5 plus A6. And if it does it right, it's 18 and 15 is 33 and 12 is 45 and 9 is 54 and 6 is 60 and 3 is 63. Enter. And there's the answer, 63. It added all them up. Okay. So that's auto sum. Let me make a border under these for now. Border, bottom border. Okay. All right. So now it added those numbers up and put the answer here, all by me just clicking the auto sum here and then choosing sum. Now this time, I'll do it manually this way. So equal, anytime you wanna do a calculation in Excel, it starts with the equal, the equal sign. If you use sum, that's a function. Anything that you type, some letters, and then you see a bunch of results down below, that's a function. If you use a function, then you need to have an open parenthesis, okay? So I'm, this time I want to manually do what the auto sum did over here. So I'm going to say equal sum and open. And then here I can type A1. So I'll type A1, A1. And then I'll type a colon. That means two. And then I want to go to this one. So I'll type B6. Oh, sorry. This, that should have been B1. B1 because I'm adding up the second column. All right. So equal sum, open, B1. And then I want colon, and then B6. So B6, close. And now when I enter, it's got the same answer as here. So if you look in the formula bar, equal sum A1 to A6, okay? If you look in the formula bar for this one, equal sum B1 to B6. You see, what I typed, even though it took longer, is exactly what auto sum did for us, but without me typing, okay? So that's that. Now, I said like we can do it this way too. So now, I'm going to first add these two, okay? But now I'm going to do it with what we call point and click. So here I'll say equal sum, open. And now, the, oh, I got a minus sum. Equal sum, open, okay? And then I want to now take A3 and B3. So I can just take A3 and B3 like that, select them and do it that way, and then close the parenthesis, okay? And that does it the same way. So three and three is six. And look at the answer. It's still equal sum, in this case, A1 to B1. This is equal sum, open, B1 to B6. And this is uh, equal sum, open, A1 to A6. And of course, then close the parenthesis. So they're all the same answer, but I did them three different ways. This time over here in A7, I used auto sum. This one here, I manually typed it, everything, including equal sum, open. And then I typed B1. And then I typed the colon, and then I typed B6, and then I closed. So I did that all myself, but it was a lot of more work than the first one, right? And then this one, I did, sorry, this one, I did equal sum open, and then I just clicked right here and dragged to there. And it automatically did the rest for me. 
And then I just had to close the parentheses again. All right. So now this formula here is adding these two numbers up. This formula down here, this one here, is adding these numbers up. This one here is also adding you know, these up. Okay. But I can use the fill handle to do this stuff too. So the answer is six on the one adding up those two rows, now those two cells. You know, it's adding up A1 and it's adding, adding up B1. And the total is in C1, but the answer is A equal sum open A1 colon B1 close the parenthesis. Okay. Now, if I want to do that same math for these two, meaning six and six is 12 to get 12 here, nine and nine is 18 to get 18 here, 12 and 12 is 24 to get 24 here. 15 and 15 is 30 to get that here, 18 and 18, 36 to get that here. And if I wanted, I could add these two as well, 126 to get that answer here, just with the fill handle, watch. Okay. So take the colon, uh, the, take the, um, the thin black, well, it's thick, uh, thin green, sorry, thin green square at the bottom right corner of the cell. And once I drag down, it's now gonna put it there. If I drag down more, it's gonna put it here and here and here, and here, and here, watch, okay? So this one equals sum A1 to B1. Watch when I drop down a spot. So now I'm in the next row, or the next cell, which is C2. C2 says equals sum A2 to B2. Exactly the same, but it just changed it to a two from one. So in other words, Excel is so smart that if you're in row one, and you do a mathematical equation on it, we just wanted to add A1 plus B1, to put the answer in C1. So that is a simple, what we call relational math question for Excel, all right? And then I took the fill handle and brought it down and then uh, Excel is thinking and it says, oh, okay, I think now what you wanna do is say equal sum open A2 to B2. Watch, if I click here, you see it's equal sum open A2 to B2. And then down here, it automatically adjusts to make it A3 to B3 because it assumes we're wanting these two. Here it assumes we want A4 to B4, and it did it correctly, okay? All those. So that was additions. Now let's minus. So now let's take this one, the six through the 126. Now we're gonna want to subtract, um, I could do this one. I'll just subtract this one, okay? So I'll, I want to subtract in this cell here, I want it to be C1, minus F3, okay? I don't really like to go right to left though, so I'd really rather just, I'll just make it this one here, okay? That, those numbers minusing these, okay? So equal, sum, open, okay? And I wanna say this one, so this is called point and click. So point and click is the same as the, the second time I did it where I manually typed everything, except the point and click lets me point at a cell and Excel throws in this, that cell address. So equal sum open, C1. This time I want a minus, minus is a dash, and I want to subtract the number just to the left of it. So I'll say B1 by point and click, okay? And you notice now it's got a different color for C1, the cell address C1, than the cell address for B1. And then I close the parentheses and again enter it, and it's back to this three over here, but done with this calculation here, except instead of t, now we got a minus, so it's equal sum c1, which is this one, and minus this one, okay? And I can still take the fill handle, and then it'll take, uh, make the next one equal sum c2 minus b2. The next one, it'll make it equal sum c3 minus b3, and c4 minus b4, c5 minus b5, c6 minus b6, and C7 minus B7, okay? So take the fill handle and go down and see what happens, okay? So I won't point and click at them all this time. I just point and click at 12 to look at the address. That's equal, uh, the formula, equal sum open C4 minus B4. Look what row we're in. We're in row four, okay? So it was taking C4, which is this, and subtracting B4, which is this. Okay, so B4 is 12, C4 is 24, and I was doing the math in this cell to put the answer. So equal sum, C4, which is 24, minus, which is a dash, 
12, which is B4. So it's equal sum open C4 minus B4. The answer is 12. Okay. All right. Now let's do one with multiplication. So let's skip over to here now and say these I want to multiply times these. Okay. Actually, I'll just do these and then I'll do an auto sum to get the total down here. All right. So I want this number here. Or the, let's just say here, I want this number times this number to be put here. Okay. So equal sum again, open this number, which is F1. So I pointed and clicked. And then multiplication in Excel is the asterisk sign. So equal sum open F1 times and point and click at D1. So in other words, I want to multiply three times three. And of course, the answer is nine. Okay. Now I want to take the fill handle. Before I do, let's see what we can do ourselves. So six sixes are 36, so that will be here. Nine nines are 81, that will be here. 12 twelves are 144, so that answer will be here. 15 times 15, 10 times 15 is 150, five times 15 is 75, 150 and 75 is 225, so 225 will be here. Now this one is a challenge. 18 times 18. So 18 times 10 is 180. So 180 will be here, but plus 80 more, 8 times 10. So 180 and 80. 180 and 80 is 260. And then I need 8 8, eight times 8 is 64. So 180 and 80 is 260, and 64 is 260, and 64 is 324 right here. Okay, let's take our fill handle and take the formula down. Let's see if I get 324 right. Yes. Okay, so that was multiplication. Three times three is nine for sure. Okay, six times six for sure is 36. Nine times nine for sure. Most of you know that's 81. Most of you probably know 12 times 12 is 144. 15 times 15, probably not too many if you know, but some of you obviously do. 15 times 15 is 225. And 18 times 18 is 324. Okay. Now I'll take these numbers and divide them by these numbers. Okay. So right here. So equal sum, open. This one here, G1, forward slash is division. So forward slash is division. Okay. And um, I want to then divide it by this one, F1. So obviously, 9 divided by 3 equals 3. Okay, oops, this one is set up as a percent. That was a mistake when I was using percent up here. If you get the wrong data type, by the way, everything is different. You'll mess it up. So we want number, and of course, that's 3. And I didn't need the decimal places, so let me just go ahead and, and get rid of those decimals. Okay, so 3. But if I take the fill handle and go down, so 36 divided by 6 is 6, right? There's 6. 81 divided by 9 is 9. In other words, we're going to get these numbers again, okay? So take the fill handle and go down, and then down, down, down. And we have the same numbers we had over here. So 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, okay? That's really, really enough for now, even though I wanted to show you at least one chart. So let me show you one small chart too. Okay, let's see here. So I'm going to now get rid of those things. I actually will leave them in case somebody wants me to demonstrate something in class. All right, let's see. I'm going to say now um, month. Okay, so I'm going to put months again. And this time I'm just going to do three months. January. Now let's just start with the month we're in. This is February. Okay, so February. And I want March and, yeah, March and April. So I go down two times. Okay, and then I'm just going to pretend that sales are over here. Sales. Okay, so for February, I'll say it's 10,000. For March, I'll say it's 11,000. And for April, I'll say it's 9,000. Okay, I want to put this in a chart, okay, where the February number of 10,000 will show, where the March number of 11,000 will show, and the April number of 9,000 will show. Okay, but before I do that, I'm going to do more stuff with auto sum. Okay, so here I'm going to type, actually, here I'm going to type, I'm going to type max. Well, I'll type sum again to demonstrate that one more time. Sum max 
min and average. Okay, I'll do those. So I want the sum to be these three numbers. So obviously 10 and 11 is 21 and 9 is 30. So that's 30,000, right? So here, auto sum, and I want it to be the sum. But here it's saying, do you want the sum up um, D10 to D13? Well, technically I don't want D13 because there's no number there. And in case I put a number there later, it will change this. So I do not want one. So I'm going to change that 13 to a 12. So I just click where the cursor is blinking, backspace to in one to get rid of the three, type a 12, and now see what it shows being done as those three numbers, enter. And it's 10 and 11 and nine is 30, and then three zeros for each, okay? Max. So max is also a built-in auto sum, max. It's gonna be the same thing, but in this case, it assumes there's only one number, and the reason it assumes there's only one number is because the, the cell above it has no number. So it doesn't make the assumption it's all because there's a, a, a blank, okay? So here, the other one, by the way, didn't because I did the first calculation based on three, but I purposefully let the blank be there. So it assumed when I wanted the sum, it wanted all of them, including the blank. It's different once you take the blank away. So now it's gonna assume this, but that's not what I want. I wanna know what's the maximum number from here to here. So I just click and drag down, so D10 to D12. Well, which of, those, which of those is the max? Obviously, it's 11,000. So I enter and see 11,000 shows up, and the formula shows as equal max. So that's what the auto sum over here shows, max. Okay? Max is a powerful and a cool tool, very important. So here we want min, right? There's min. We want min here. But again, not the minimum of these two. I want the minimum of these three. So I need to fix it once it shows up. So auto sum, go to min. I don't want it here, I want it from these. So in other words, I want the answer to be 9,000. So I'll select these three. So equal min, D10, open parenthesis, D10 to D12. In other words, from D10 down to D12, okay? And then the min will obviously be 9,000, okay? And then if I want the average, so 10 and 11 and nine is 30, so the average is gonna be 10, right? So here I want the average. So down here, auto sum, average. Okay. But again, I don't want the average of those. I want the average of these. Okay. And that will be 10,000. All right. Okay. Now I'm going to though put these three months and these three sales totals in a chart. All right. So I'm going to select from here and I'm going to hold my control key down, not my shift, but my control key to get these three. Okay. In other words, I'm not counting column B. I'm not, or not using, I'm not using column C. There's nothing in B and there's nothing in C, okay? These I want and these I want. So the reason I purposefully separated them is so that you'd know how to do it without, without uh, doing it the shift key way. Like the shift key way is you just select everything and then you just do it like that and it's all there. But if I put something in column B or I put something in column C later on down in these spots, it'll then ruin the data. So if you do it this way, just those. So I clicked in cell A9 and drag down, and then I push my control key down. If you're on a Mac, sorry, you have to figure it out yourself. I'm on a Windows regular keyboard, but anyway, so I'm gonna hold my control key down and, and select those. Even though you see sales, you might say it's not selected, it is. It's got the border around it, see? It's just that the first cell you click in, for the new one, <coughs> because then you drag out of it, 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 this is selected, you just don't know it, okay? Now, I wanna insert that. So insert, and I wanna go over, here's all the recommended charts. Normally, I like to show these things in column charts. So there's a three-dimensional or a two-dimensional. I want the three-dimensional, which is what this thing here is demonstrating. I don't want this one, but I could. I don't want this one, but I could. I don't want this one, but I could. I want this right here, so I'm going to click on it. And that chart is now right next to it. You see, it's right here, okay? Now look, it's got sales. There's the word sales. It's got February, March, and April. There's February, March, and April. That's the only three, four, five words. So it's got, it doesn't put the word month because, you know, months, again, are sort of understood. But I could also have these amounts pop up right next to it. See, like here as I hover, it tells you the first one is 10,000. Whoops. 
Okay, 10,000 words has value. The value for this one is 11. The value for this one is nine. You can see those numbers there. But if I click this plus sign, okay, chart elements, and I want data labels, I just put a check mark here and watch what happens. See, now it's got 10,000 there, 11,000 there, and 9,000 there. Okay, you can do a lot more than just that. But anyway, so that is done. I'm going to save this workbook. So file save as, and then stop this so that you guys, let's see, let's go all the way back to my desktop, all the way back to MDC, all the way back to spring 2022 and Homestead, and just save it as Excel, Excel basic overview. All right. Professor Maloney. All right. So put that in there and save it. All right. Now I'm going to close it down. And that is going to be it. So I hope you learned a lot about basic Excel. I'm going to stop this sharing. I'll stop my recording.